Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to today's video. I don't know when this is going out because it is December and I'm putting out as many videos as I can to keep you guys entertained during the festive period, but I'd like to show you some plants today. They all really share one thing in common and that is that they have unicorn status currently. Very important. I know a lot of people give me a lot of shit for things that I say on videos about things being unicorns when they aren't. My advice to you is to check the upload dates on those videos and take what I say with a pinch of salt. But as of right now, these plants are super, super rare. One of these plants was on my wish list. Another one of these plants I've actually owned for a long, long time, but it's only just recently made the journey over to me from the USA. And the third plant is a plant that if I'd known about it last year, I would have put it on my wish list and it it is super, super rare. So I can't wait to show you that at the end. But without further ado, let's just get into it now then. So the first plant I want to show you, I don't actually know too much about and I can't believe I'm saying that, but I tried to look it up yesterday prior to filming today to see what I could find out about this plant. And actually there's not a lot out there. Like, I don't know if anyone knows the origin of this plant. And if you have any information on this plant, please leave it in a comment because I'd be really interested. But let me just get the first unicorn. So the first plant I have is genuinely quite hard to hold up and it's growing in a really funky way that it's been under my light in the shop. But the first plant I want to talk about today is none other than the Philodendron Whipple Way. And if I pull this leaf down to show you what it looks like, you get a better idea. I've had this plant quite a while. Obviously, I've had new growth that's come from me and the rest of it is the older leaves. But what happens with this plant is it's such an awesome plant. The leaves come in much brighter than this. They actually come in borderline white if you get the right conditions on them. Not only that, but they have like a pink kind of flush up the back of them. So a lot of the time they can look either like white or baby pink. And what happens is they turn from that and they basically fade down to this minty color because obviously this leaf is hardening off now. And then they turn gradually green, but you do still get some dark flecks left over. Now these things don't go full green. They actually stay really, really light in color. And I just find them amazing. I think I put this on my wish list last year and and they're a little bit more around now than what they were then. Back then they were literally impossible to get, so it's nice to see what's happened over the span of a year. At least, you know, some people are propagating them and they're coming out. But I've wanted this plant for so long and I'm so pleased that at the last minute I've managed to tick this off my wish list. Now this might not have been too much of a surprise for some people because I have been selling these in my shop. I have both a selection of like full-size plants like this one, well, a bit smaller than this, and then I have one leaf cuttings as well just to make it more affordable. But I've been selling pieces of this for a while. Obviously, this is my own specimen and I'm just kind of low-key in love with it. I think it's such a great plant. And if you're a fan of things like Philodendron Florida Ghost and you want something that does the same sort of stuff, but it's not variegated and you're not going to lose variegation and, and all of that jazz, this is absolutely one to at least wait for if you don't want to get them for the current prices now. These are very, very, very rare right now. These are like at the top end of what they're ever going to be. So if you want to get in on it now, cool. If you want to wait, cool. But I I want to show you this because it's just the most beautiful plant. It's not the best, not that it's not the best specimen in the world, but it's not the best example of the colors you can get. I will insert a picture of what it can look like so you can actually see what I'm talking about because this is a much more faded down version of that, but it's so gorgeous and they size up real nice as well. They get some really big leaves. Obviously, this isn't a small specimen, but I wouldn't say it was a big specimen either. I would say it was maybe medium. So it's really, really beautiful. The petiole comes in a creamy white as well and the whole thing fades down. It's just the best. And I love the fact that it still has green flecks in it. Look at the state of this. Oh, bless it. It's just the best plant. And I'm so pleased to have one because I've waited so, so long. And honestly, I was searching for it so much. I just assumed I was never going to find it. So, 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 so happy to have this plant. And I do have cuttings available. Um, if you want some, contact the shop. If whenever you're looking at this, they're not up for sale or the shop seemingly shut. Do contact the shop if you're looking for them because I do have some. All I know about this plant, by the way, the reason I haven't told you much about this plant is because I know basically nothing. I think it was named after two collectors in the US that introduced this plant and they named it after the street that they lived on. And I don't know any more than that. So as I say in the comments, if you know something about this plant, if you can point me towards any information about this plant, I would love to know about it. So get commenting if you know anything about this. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And so far, it's a pretty easy grower. 
I haven't had any problems. I would liken it a lot to Jose Bono or something like that. No problems at all. So really, really pretty plant. And I'm so pleased, so pleased to finally have one. Next plant is literally of no surprise to anyone. Maybe it is, if you're not aware, the fact that this was actually my plant the whole time. I think there might have been some confusion at some point. But anyway, there has been a variegated Gloriosum that is reasonably famous, I would say, on Enid from NSC Tropicals' Instagram. Basically, that's actually my plant and Enid has been looking after it for me. Um, it's been a little bit notable this year. There was an auction that failed on it you know, about a month ago. We all know about that. If you don't, I'm sure someone in the comments will update you on that. But basically, Enid has been growing this plant for me for, wow, is it a couple of years now? It's been a while. And basically monitoring the variegation, etc, etc, and just keeping it going, I guess. And very, very recently, I bought another plant that you will see in a moment after this one. And basically, I had this one shipped over with it. So the Gloriosum I'm about to show you, it's not the only one. I have a couple more. But this is the one that lasted the best in shipping. So I'm going to show you this one. I can see actually on the caterpillar there's a big stripe of it, despite having two green leaves. So I will show you that. Before I keep talking, I will show you this and I will tell you the story while I show you it. So I'm probably going to have to put it down next to me because it is quite large. If I put it on the table, which is kind of here, it goes up to about here. And this is the best leaf that I have. This is the oldest leaf here. This is the oldest leaf, followed by this all green, followed by this leaf here that clearly the inspectors have done a lovely number on and split it up the side. But... I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, you know, but if I show you that, can you see that big stripe up the caterpillar? I was going to cut this, but I'm not going to yet because I want to see what happens with this caterpillar because it's quite possible that this variegation is going to come back and look like this. Before I get into the history of it, I just want to talk about the variegation a little bit. So basically, a lot of the time that this is photographed on NSA Tropicals um, anything really on their Instagram, it looks quite yellow in variegation. And I have pictures of it as well that I've even used that look very yellow in variegation. That's not actually how it stays. And I, this is, leaf is a really good example of that because we're in kind of normal white lighting now, kind of like a daylight bulb. So what happens is the variegation comes through quite yellowish, but it actually hardens to a creamy white. Now it's not totally white. It's not blinding, you know, Monstera Albo white or like this pot white, which you could probably tell if I get them both in the frame at once there. This is lily white and this is the color that this plant goes. So it does harden a really pretty color. I know a lot of people thought that it was yellow variegated. It's not. It's actually, we'll call it white, but you get my feel. It's off white. I'll just show you this up close because it's, it's kind of stunning, is it not? Look at that. Oh my good lord. That is beautiful. Is that not a thumbnail? Seriously? So basically the story of this plant is as follows. This has come from a single mother plant and I can't remember when this was. I believe this was 2019 at some point. I think it was before the show. So maybe it was midsummer, something like that. There was a person that found, I think in their own batch or their friend's batch or whatever, in a pot outside in their garden or whatever, they found this very gay gloriosum and they put it up for auction. I think there was two pieces of this plant and they put it up for auction in 2019. Now, a few people were bidding on it. Um, I actually won that at, I think it was $1,700, which at the time was 1,400 uh, English pounds. And basically it was sold in the US. And because I knew I was going to the International Arid Show later that year, I planned to pick it up on the day and I hadn't really thought too much further after that. But on the day of the show, I showed this to Enid and I said to her, look, can you please do something with this. Could you take care of this today? Because I'm out and I'm meeting people. I'm doing all this stuff. I was at the auction on the night time. Like I didn't want anything to happen to this beautiful plant. So she took it for me and she kept it safe at the nursery. I actually came home without this plant. I didn't make any effort to go and collect it because I thought, you know what? Let's acclimate it there. Let's keep it safe for now. Let's see how it does. And quite honestly, if anybody's going to look after a plant, it's going to be Enid. You feel me? So what ended up happening was it was growing so well there and it looked so beautiful. I didn't really want to put it on a plane or anything like that or into a box and remove it. I didn't because it was growing so well. So it's actually stayed there the entire time until very recently where I've had it sent over. So I have a couple of pieces of this, different levels of variegation. There's a lot nicer variegates than this, but it's gone a bit mushy in transit, which is a shame, but it happens. And this one was the least damaged one to show you. But it's got a beautiful chunk on it. Let's see what happens with this caterpillar, but it's got a beautiful chunk on it. There is still a piece over with Enid in NSA, just as insurance, in case these just didn't make it over in a box. Because I tell you something, I ship in plants all the time. 
and some boxes are more stressful than others. But when I show you the next plant, hopefully you will understand just how stressful this has been to get these plants over here because they were actually stuck in customs despite having the documentation. And this always happens to me. It is always the worst boxes in the world. Always the expensive stuff that it will go wrong. If it's a cheap plant, it's not going to go wrong. It's going to glide through. In a minute, you'll probably see what I'm talking about. So, so that's the tea with the variegated gloriosum. Um, it is my plant. It has always been my plant. I haven't really talked about it because I didn't really feel the need, mainly because I haven't had it with me. So what was the point? Do you know what I mean? It's on Enid's Instagram, but I'm really happy to have it back. It's kind of weird because when I did collect it that day, I think I only actually touched the plant for about 10 minutes and then I gave it to Enid and then I never saw it again. And I haven't been to visit it due to COVID and all the rest. So it's really a privilege to have it back and to have it with me. And I hope you guys can appreciate how gorgeous it is. I just hold it above me. Look at that. Isn't it stunning? Oh, honestly. So obviously the plan with this is to grow it, to propagate it, to do all the things you would usually do with it. I absolutely love it though. And it is a real, real privilege to have it back. I'm so excited. So the last plant I have to show you today is without a doubt a true unicorn. Now, I would have included this in a rare plant index if I'd actually known about it at the time. It was really, really unknown to me. But I heard about this Anthurium, oh, I don't know, maybe a year ago. It wasn't straight away. Maybe in 2020 I'd heard about it and I'd certainly seen it. I wasn't aware of how rare it was, but I had since found that out. But the last plant I want to talk to you about today, and I promise you, stay with me on this. Don't write a comment till you're at the end of the video. I promise you, stay with me on this. But the last plant I'd like to talk to you about today is Anthurium Delta Force. Now, I actually got most of my information on this plant from a reasonably recent edition of the IAS newsletter. There was a big spread on it. So if you haven't seen that, I don't know if you have to pay to view that. But I'm going to read you basically the notes I took from that article because I knew of this plant, but I didn't know any specifics. Now, I'm not going to get into how to identify it or anything like that, but I just want you to know a couple of things about it. So I'm reading off my phone just to make sure I don't miss anything out. It was created by Steve Nock of Reed Gardens back in the 90s in the US. It is a hybrid of Clarinervium and Pedatoradiatum. I can't even say that. Pedatoradiatum. Really hard to say. I'll put it on the screen. It was a very unique clone pulled out of a huge batch of seeds. Now, these two plants have been hybridized together a lot since then. Obviously, this was the 90s, but not once in this process has there been a clone matching Anthurium Delta Force. There is literally the one plant in existence, guys. The one plant. I'm not kidding. The one plant. And when you see Delta Force on the internet, they are taken from that one plant. Plant. Apparently, a single seed of this plant, because they have been flowering and they have been seeding, a single seed of this plant sold for $5,000 in the US this year. Now, I don't mean a seedling, I mean a seed, like a seed. A seed sold for $5,000. I heard about that and I thought that was just insanity. Like I actually couldn't believe someone would take that risk. But then of course I found out more about the plant and now I kind of understand. So this plant here is not Anthurium Delta Force. No, it is not. So any angry comments, you can delete them. So this plant here is a hybrid of Clarinervium and Pedata radiatum. I can't say that Pedata radiatum. I have to slow myself down when I say it, but it is very similar and I want to show you it. So don't worry, I haven't clickbaited you. If you look at this, if I get it in front of my face, it may focus a little bit better, but you can see a lot of the hallmarks of a Delta Force. Now, my point here is that, again, it is not the same. It looks similar, but not quite. And I'll be quite interested to see how this develops as it gets older, because I think more of the, the definition will definitely come into play. Don't get me wrong, that is very similar. And to some, it would possibly fool them, but this is not Anthurium Delta Force. Now, even if it looked exactly like the original clone, it still cannot be named Anthurium Delta Force. So I'm not sat here telling you that it is, because it is not. This is an Anthurium Delta Force. Now, you have to excuse the appearance of this because Customs really didn't like this plant and they've done it such a number. But let me try my best and hold this up for you. Please appreciate this is a very large plant and it is very difficult. But if I put that near my head, you should see the sheer magnitude of this plant right here. Have you seen the size of that? This is an original 
Delta Force taken from the original Delta Force plant. It is, I assume, a cutting. I will try and rotate it round. Again, this is really difficult to do, but here is another leaf here where you can really see it like that. It's got these really spread out lobes at the top and it's got this really beautiful border as well. Do I have another leaf? There is a younger leaf there by my neck. Um, this one here is cool as well. I think the best one to show you is unfortunately the one that's broke. There is one here. I don't know if I showed you this one. Let me just try and rotate it around. There is one here. It's such a shame that it is that transit damaged because this one here, this big boy, oh my goodness me, this is the newest leaf and it's such a shame and it's huge and it's amazing. But I just want you to see how gorgeous this plant is. And it really is characterized by this amazing border here the interesting veining that I've never really seen before. And of course, these lobes that are borderline flat, like flat lobes. It's like a giant arrow. It's so, so gorgeous. Now, some people might not know of this plant's existence. I don't know. And like I say, when I did the first Anthurium Rare Plant Index, I didn't know about it because I would have put it in wholly if I'd known, but I didn't at the time. So this has been a new one for me. And I didn't even put it on a wish list because I didn't think it would be even obtainable. And I can't even believe that I have obtained it, to be honest with you. Now, I did indirectly reference this plant a while ago in a repot with me. You may or may not remember if you're a regular view of my channel. I did say that there was a plant that it wasn't on my wish list, but it would have been. And I don't want to jinx it, but I think I found it. That was this plant. I'd got this plant. I didn't want to jinx it in case it never arrived and something went wrong. So that's why I didn't really mention what it was. The last thing I want to do is say that I'm getting something and it just never rocks up. Anyway, a little more about this plant. This, can you see it in the middle there? That's a flower. Yes, really, that's a flower. Um, I don't have high hopes for this flower. Let me just put this down. Hopefully it's not going to cause a problem here. I don't have high hopes for this flower here because this flower has been present during transit and nine times out of ten, if the plant has any stress at all and it is flowering, the flower will go. But you know what? It's cool that it is flowering and that means it's obviously mature enough to flower again. So I'm quite happy about this and I'm very very hopeful for the future. I think this plant has a really bright future ahead of it. How gorgeous is this? I can show you that a little bit easier now that it's sat on the desk. How beautiful is it though? Just look, it's stunning. It's not like any other anthurium I've ever seen. And it, I don't like saying the word unicorn on this channel because honestly it gets abused a lot. I see it a lot on Instagram, the words used to not really talk about unicorns, but I would actually genuinely use the word unicorn for this plant. I think it really merits it because there is only one plant in existence and everything else is either a seed from it or of course it is a cutting from the plant. So I am so, so, so happy. Um, I don't think there are any more in the UK and I'm pretty sure there aren't any in Europe either. So this is the only one on this side of the world and I couldn't be happier about this, honestly. It's so beautiful. It's just a shame about the transit damage, is it not? I'll show you it again. Again, it really is that big. It's hard to hold on to. It's in a huge self-watering pot at the minute. It's in pond, by the way, if you're wondering. I just smashed it into pond. I didn't really know what else to do. Plus, it's really good for feeding at really low level if you're not sure what you're doing with a plant. Look at that, honest to God. I'll now give you a little bit more information on the other plant. Let's see if I can just turn this in a way where you can at least see some of it. Can you? Probably not. Probably yes, probably no. We'll put it there. So the reason I bought this plant, I can't remember if I already had the Delta Force. I think maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I can't actually remember. I'd have to check. It was around about the same time anyway. But I knew when I bought this that it wasn't Delta Force. This was offered to me as just a weird anthurium looking hybrid. And because it was so similar, and you could probably see now that it is very similar. It's not the same, but it is very similar. I think it lacks the border, if anything, around the edge. I really wanted to see how it turned out. So we will see how this turns out. And I think it'd be really interesting, to be honest, to compare these two plants. Obviously, this plant is much further behind. I have had this in my possession a lot longer. I just don't know when I purchased these because this has been kind of waiting to come to me because I sent it with the variegated gloriosum, which is why I've had the most stressful week of my entire life trying to get these plants in in this box. But I bought this knowing that it wasn't. I just wanted to see the difference and I wanted to see how this grows and what the differences really are when it reaches maturity because obviously this is tiny. This is a really tiny plant. But I'm definitely going to document it. I'm definitely going to keep you up to date with what these are doing and what they look like. You will probably see this on Instagram the second it gets a new really pretty leaf. I will completely keep you in the loop on it. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a tough plant, by the way, which is just like the biggest bonus on planet Earth because it has Clarinervium in it. And it looks the same 
with the roots. The roots look exactly like Caranovium roots, if you've seen Caranovium roots before. It was very floppy when it arrived and it went in water and 24 hours, bang, stiff as a board. So it's really, really tough. So far, I can tell you it's tough. It's weird. It's kind of rubbery. It's not suede and it's not glossy. It feels a bit rubber-like. That's the best way I can describe it. And it is not a matte finish. It is kind of a satin finish. Can you see that? I don't know what this one has. This one is a bit more matte. I think it would be satiny. Yeah, actually, you can see that. I'm lying to you. You can see it's quite satiny, but I really want to see what the differences are. And I'm so excited. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have a plan of this level of prestige. I'm so, so happy to have it. So I will update you on it. I'm going to give it another curdle. And that is it for this video. That's what I wanted to show you today. Those are my three unicorns of different levels, I would honestly say. But that is it. Those are the three plants I've been dying to show you for a while. I've just put it off. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you've got any comments or any useful information on any of the plants I've mentioned, maybe some funny stories about the Delta Force or, I don't know, the, the Whipple and stuff like that. Because as I said before, I don't actually know the origin of it. It seems a bit hazy to be honest. If you know anything, please feel free to write a comment below. That is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I do have merch available in the description if that's something that you would like to purchase. Members do get a discount. If you're a member of my channel, make sure you check there because there are discounts for you. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you'd like to see any more of my content on generally rare plants, but not limited to, then please feel free to subscribe if you're not already. That's it for this video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!